So hi, my name's Linda Keane and today I've got Laura Williams with me. Now Laura has been working a long time in the aquatic industry. So we thought that it'd be a good opportunity to have a chat and for her to explain a little bit about what she does. So hi Laura. Hi Linda, nice to see you. And you, especially during this lockdown period. I'll go glasses up for a minute because it's not sunny so I can... Uh... Well I can see you now. <laughs> yeah, I think most people think these are my sunglasses, but they're not. They're my dyslexia glasses. So. Yeah. Anyway, right. So, so Laura, how long have you been working in a swimming pool? Well, quite a long time. It's really hard to think about how many years it's been, but it's definitely over 10. And I initially qualified in clinical massage and body work, working primarily for NHS trusts. And then... Um, I realised how important water treatment was for patients that were receiving it, not through me, but through colleagues. And I got really fascinated about how soft tissue work can work wonders in warm water. So that was my sort of pathway of getting through into it. So I did the um, uh, relevant courses and the rest is history, really. I spend probably... 60-40% of my time in the water. Some weeks it's a lot more in water, um, but it's nice to be able to do some land work with patients and then, then get into the pool on the same session. And I feel very privileged that I'm in a position to do that with clients, um, which is unusual, I think. It's not all, mm. not all common practice. No, so what would you, what would you say that your, um, what would you call yourself, I suppose? What would you say your profession is? Well, I qualified in clinical massage therapy and integrated body work um, and then did aquatic therapy training on top of that. But I always wanted to work in neurology. Um, so most of my clients have complex neurological conditions, both acquired or inherited um, diseases. So I can work with people that have had strokes, ME, sorry, not ME, MS, um, Parkinson's, MMD. Um, Huntington's disease I work a lot with in water and the results are fantastic for that client group um, cerebral palsy of course and I see a lot of people with spinal cord injuries so it's a big array of conditions so I can really see how their particular presentation is different on land and in water and what I feel the benefits of water treatment is is that they can achieve a lot more in the pool than they can on land and Absolutely. if you can work yeah it's amazing isn't it and if you work with somebody for a long journey as part of their rehabilitation or maintenance program you see then a carryover into the land sessions which i think is, is amazing if you can get someone that can't stand but they can step on land but they can stand in the pool that can then start to carry over into their land sessions so um, i work collaboratively a lot with neurophysios speech therapists and ot's and they're now coming in the water more as well which is really fun so can work with non-verbal children <coughs> um, and if they're the most alert in the pool and their focus is the most alert in the pool we then do our joint therapy sessions in the water and we've seen a massive carryover particularly with clients that are non-verbal and can't make choices being able to use their electric communication aids and we can then uh, integrate that into their learning programs at school which is i think yeah, that's a fantastic approach so do you think you work more with children or with adults? Oh, complete mix. Um, so I, I feel very lucky that some of my clients go through uh, uh, medical legal cases, either from accidents that um, was acquired from medical negligence or through insurances, where um, perhaps a road traffic accident, for example. So we can be part of a big multidisciplinary team. Um, and we can do a whole team approach so I can see a child through to adulthood as well if obviously their goals are being achieved and therapies needed um, but it's it's a nice position because they'll either have a pool built in their property if, if it's deemed that that's necessary for them or I can do one-on-one -on -one in, in hydrotherapy pools that we hire so I generally don't use big big comp um, my sessions are one-on-one -on -one in a pool there aren't generally other people using it and I yeah. know that that's a luxury. Um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it, it's it's nice because I just I would find it that they would find it, and so would I. Quite distracting, to be honest, to treat mm -hmm. with other therapists in a pool. 
um, especially with the clients I work with that need that one-on-one -on -one and calm focused environment you've been on sessions with me haven't you and yeah. imagine those clients in a massive public pool or yeah, it just no, wouldn't work no. would it yeah no. well, it'd be very challenging yeah and you yeah. you help them to uh, uh, get pools built within their own homes as well yeah can do it's not for every not every case it's very hard to get funding for pools but we can certainly highlight so during the process obviously we have to write reports and you could do a lot i do a lot of videoing of, of the presentation prior to starting um intensive blocks of aquatic therapy to the end and then we then apply for more funding for treatment and then it can be included in settlement so quite a few of my clients do have their own pools and we've been able to get them so that they're a good size so they can really work on their fitness there's enough space for other family members to join in because it needs to be a, a family um, exercise as well if you're dealing with younger children or adults that have got ch their own children it's an environment where they can be completely equal and as one which I think mm -hmm. on land it can be a struggle if you're a, a wheelchair user. Um, it's lovely to see children hugging their parents without them yeah. needing the support of a wheelchair. Oh, lovely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's really special. And just all, all having swimming races and, and where they're all at one, because they can all wear the same floats really as well. Yes. All, all yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've, I've found that as well, working with some of my disabled people that they say that there's, um, they feel the same as everybody else. They don't look any different when they're in the pool yeah. to anybody else. So. Really empowering. And I do it think the research, the research that's happening and the benefits of submersion of water is only going to help our the most vulnerable have access to yeah. the right facilities. And we know that there's a huge crisis in Britain, that there aren't enough properly built aquatic therapy uh, pools and, or hydrotherapy pools with really good um, entry and um, exit um areas for people to use with dignity and, and mm. with ease you know it's the trouble it's is a, a lot of the hydro pools are being shut down aren't they so the well, they, they are because they're quite mm. generally they're they're too expensive to run because they were built 15 20 years ago um, yeah. yeah and the, the running costs of pools are coming down if you build them correctly um absolutely and, and we find that you know that you can actually run really successful aquatic therapy pool and it can it can mean that you know in other countries like in israel they have over 150 people using their pools a day you know if they can do it we should be able to do it yeah absolutely absolutely um so i know that you've recently been done a talk on um speech in water can't think of the right word. Yeah, you think how you can use speech and language therapy. And, and, and yeah, so I work a, a lot with speech and language therapists. And, you know, some are really keen to get their costumes on and some aren't. And I totally understand that. It's not everyone's uh, happy environment putting a swimming costume in. But as we work um, on, rather, as we work um, on a one to one basis, it, I think that's easier for them. So some are really keen to come in the water, especially. Um, one in particular I do a lot of collaborative work with so we're using ele ele electric um, um, uh, ACT so um, communication aids for for this particular child that's waterproof so she uses this communication aid in every environment uh, and she's got better at using her communication aid because of coming to the pool because she's the most alert she's um, she's the most focused for a full hour and she permanently uses like more go, change activity, um, you know, stop, which is really important. You know, that if she's not happy, she yeah. can tell us I want to stop. Um, or, or if she actually wants to do more or different activity for her to give her that choice is immense if you're nonverbal. So yeah. by using this piece of um, communication aid in the water has certainly made a massive difference to her using it um, in, land-based activities both at school going to the cinema at home um and that's been really lovely to be able to see that and it should be done more there's no reason for non-verbal children and adults not to be able to use their electric communication aids in the pool because the software's there and the hardware's there it's just having collaborative therapists wanting to work together 
and perhaps and not that, being professionally defensive. Yeah, <laughs> that'll is, be the day when we can all collaborate and work together. That will be. Yeah, the day. <laughs> I think. Well, I, I certainly feel within my practice, I work. It, there's it's massive collaboration between all disciplines, and when we're all around an MDT table. Uh, our outcome is what's best for that client and I feel that we really do our best but um and maybe that's unusual I don't know but it's certainly really lovely to see aquatic therapy being used in that way because yeah. I can obviously see see patients uh, both on land and in water so we can then we can work on standing in the water and then standing on land and there's, there's such great carryover and it should just yeah. be a normal part of people's rehab is to have access to the right pool Absolutely. um sadly it isn't um yeah. okay so so you, you love working with your um verbal communication systems what what sort of what is your other favorite trick or toy when you're working with your clients? Oh, it's loads. There's this amazing new product. Well, it's not new, but I only discovered it about a year and a bit ago. Plastic paper. Oh, you can print on it and it doesn't run. But my days of laminating are over for pool based yes. instructions or, you know, if we're wanting to play noughts and crosses or working on numbers or, uh, in fact, having non having communication pods or or systems for children that's my love and i stick them they stick they're sheets of a4 and we can stick yeah. them water sticks it to the float that's my favorite thing yeah uh, you introduced most, me and Haley to that yeah time, it's so. just revolutionary there's no need to laminate every single day i've got superheroes on it so we swim to batman and spider-man whoever wonder woman of course and um, I love that. And I particularly like, I, just, I really like the, the um, Kifa, Kaifa, I never know how to pronounce it, collar. Because um, yeah. I find it fits children and adults, the black bean baggy one. And it's not scratchy. And the older they are, the better I find, because they don't then offer too much support. If it's well, we've actually support. got, because um, you know, I've had the collar made as well myself. So yeah. I've, I've got another version of it as well. Uh, which you might like. Um, yeah, I'd love to try it, definitely. I, yeah, I can't try it just yet, but it's going to be like the bean bag. But instead of having mm. a star in that squishes flat, it's got something else that's that's sort of moldable. Yeah, and I find the clippy it's things a bit irritating to the guys. But well, it's, got, it's, a... um, it's got a protective collar on it now, so. Mm, nice. I also thing? love the bendy woggle, which I... Yeah, I like a bendy happen... woggle. Yeah, because they're or aquabone unfortunate name i think but they um they're really nice for certainly people to work in prone i find if because they're not quite as buoyant as a standard woggle the ones i seem to get and yeah. once they're crunched in place they kind of stay crunched in place so you if you're trying to work both in prone and supine on upper limb range they don't get in the way some, yeah. as much as others I, so I quite like those and they're only like six quid so for families they're really reasonable to buy and I'm just trying to think about what other kit I really like to use I do wonder oh, as well whether now though coming out of COVID-19 whether we are going to be recommending that people actually purchase their own kit so we don't have to travel yeah. from one place to the other I mean slightly different for yourself because mm. um, obviously well, most of, their own yeah pools. there are ways that you can you, there is a um, when I was speaking to a pool bill company I work a lot with I was asking them about decontamination of pool equipment and I think that they might end up being a system that's used because actually in reality it should be cleaned between use of person I mean they say yeah. that chlorine will kill any bugs but I, I don't know about the evidence of that to be honest um, yeah. but most of my clients have their own kit I do have as you know, you've seen a boot full of stuff, um, but possibly it'd be better that it, it wasn't reused from person to person. Yeah, yeah. I quite like the, the, the key for Wonderboard. That's quite nice for working on sitting. Yes. Um, because you can also stand on it as well, um, and work in it. Yeah, I quite like that. And um, using, is it, I think it's it's a barbell that J P Leonard do. So it's like a pole with two floats at an end. So that's quite nice for working in prone. And for children, you can kind of do games with it as well. You can kayak. And so I use yeah. I mainly use those sort of products. And obviously weights a lot. Um, 
and integrating your aqua stretch techniques with with a sort of a combination I think when you become a skilled practitioner it's very hard and people say well what techniques do you use I don't know if you find that Linda it's very hard to answer that it's a complete hybrid of everything and well this is what um, I say it's and like, it's like, the right it's like a toolbox. yes yeah like a toolbox. So using weights I've always used weights for standing people that are just learning to stand again in the water to give them that kind of that feeling of, of grounding but um yeah you the weights that you that I got from you are really good because they are very heavy um yeah. and they fit a lot of people rather than the, the standard ones that are really for wrists but you can sort of put them on children's ankles but you can't really put them on adults yeah. ankles yeah. So I use your your weights a lot for working on single leg or, or standing yeah. yeah no I think they're great yeah yeah it's i mean that's i think that's one of the luxuries when you can work with one-to-one -one, you can use a lot of different pieces of equipment whereas of course if you have a group of people uh, this is why mo uh, you know most of the swimming pools i think have the noodles and they have the dumbbells they don't have all the other sort of beautiful other pieces of equipment that's yeah happens. absolutely and i um and i actually i use the aqua step a lot and they're really yeah. hard to buy at times to be honest they are. Um, so it's I'll link using, so a lot of my children will need joint action routines, so repetition of task after task in order to um, learn a skill. Mm -hmm. So we'll use a combination of either their low-tech uh, communication pathway system, which will be on the, the paper, um, or their electronic communication aids for, if we're looking at uh, trying to teach them to work on stepping. So we'll get them to... Uh, we'll tell them that we're going to go to the pink step if it happens to be pink or blue they don't seem to do any other colors at the moment um and that will they then have to look down step up wait which for a lot of children and adults with certain conditions will be a struggle look down step down and then that will then be uh, uh, practiced over and over again and then they'll be able to step in and out of the pool or then be able to step in and out of their car or then be able to step up the stairs at school for example um so that's quite a nice way of using equipment. It is. And having carryover. And yeah. Functional. Very functional. Yeah, totally functional and independent. And being also then being able to do step up, step down and, and waiting, you know, and also sidestepping across them. So we have a series of them. So we'll have like twelve of these steps and we'll do an assault course around the pool. Um and it gets some, it gets nice. I, I, we have great fun as you know i love it <laughs> i'm yeah. missing it <laughs> i know i know i think we all of us pool people are missing missing being in the pool and doing what we do mm -hmm. um so how much do you think the industry's changed since you first started um i i think there's much more acceptance for other type of therapists to be working in the water um mm -hmm. i think i've been lucky that i've worked in hospitals that have been happy for me to assist and be part of the team when it comes to their, their water treatment of patients. Um, I don't think that's normal by any means, but I think I've been very lucky um, that they realise that I'm not a threat and that what I can do can be really beneficial for the client, which is all what we're in for, isn't it? We want the yes. gains for them in order for them to achieve their potential, which is always at the back of my mind when it comes to my client group. Um, and now people are quite used to me working in waters and uh, so definitely i don't there's not such a barrier i don't think no. um and working in the medical legal world people are quite i'm getting you know work with case managers and solicitors and that my referrals will be initially just for aquatic therapy deliverance which i think is really lovely as opposed to land-based therapy um and then i can work collaboratively with the physios speech therapists and ot's and we're using water as the main medium of improvement for these clients mm -hmm. which i think is really dynamic and different and hopefully yeah. it'll become normal that's that's the plan yes yes it's i mean it's, it's still a bit of a struggle we still got to but i do think that the um sort of the gap is getting smaller um you know the, yeah the, and I, I i think um if we need i think it's very important to, to evidence base what we can do yes. so uh, how i i always vid on a video i feel obviously now with gdpr we have to be compliant goes without saying but with the use of video technology you can really uh highlight the improvements that people get from 
uh, their aquatic therapy and using different outcome measures is really vital in order to because otherwise you can't you can't just say oh well they're swimming better or their pain's better you need to or you know their gait pattern's better or you know you've got to really evidence it so what i use i use um different outcome measure tools to highlight that and it's really good so, to be able to so what that. what are some of your outcome measure tools because that's there are so many out there that if you just google outcome measures you know you get a, a list oh, of, yeah no, no. and there's very little just as the, long as your arm as tall as your body yeah, very, yeah i completely agree and the, the problem is there isn't really an aquatic therapy outcome measure no. tool uh, that's approved so i'll use um we use you might i don't know when you came with me if we used it i'll have a i have a strap on heart monitor a heart rate mm -hmm. monitor that will measure heart rate throughout the session and i have it on a watch so i can then see what the, the, my client's heart rate's doing so basically you're proving if someone can exercise in water so yeah. if they struggle on land to raise their heart rate you can then say well actually we can raise their heart rate in the water so we'll do that and i'll put it in in charts obviously and break it down into different yeah uh, i mean activities. that's actually that's one of the fantastic things that have come fairly recently because it wasn't that long ago that heart rate monitors didn't work in the swimming pool. Well, I was having to use a pulse oximeter for many years. And of course, by the time you dried their finger, their heart rate's gone down. But it still was generally higher from post-exercise. Yeah. So, but now we can do it from, from the moment they, they go into the water and, and start of a length to the middle of a length to the end of a length. So mm -hmm. we can then evidence base, well, actually, they need a longer pool rather than a three meter by three meter pool because they won't yeah. be able to raise their heart rate with three arm strokes, for example. Yeah. So I'll use that. Um, I'll use a visual um, pain scale. So for clients that have got the capacity to do that, we can measure their pain. I'll do joint range of movements. So there's, you'll see, um, normally I'll do that in collaboration with another therapist. We'll measure joint yeah. range pre going into the pre session that can be down to even finger digits so for, for some of my spinal cord injured patients that um are about to have surgery or or have had surgery we can really measure their their um all their joint ranges and um work on the exercises in the water using resistance um to strengthen so we can yeah. we do that for before when we're in the water and then we get out you know that can take a huge amount of time of the session but if the clients are really in a position that they want to have a pool as part of their settlement they're generally prepared to go through that so it won't be necessarily a normal session it'll be more uh, that we're measuring for an hour before we get into the water we do an hour session we measure while we're in the water and then they get showered dressed and then we measure afterwards and yeah looking at edema measuring edema for some of my patients is huge having even just this being submerged in water their edema goes down significantly yes um, that's one good. thing i'm finding at the moment with yeah uh, people not being in the pool all my edema patients and my lymphedema and yeah that'd be huge well, 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 really, it's really bad so what we're finding you know now lots of uh, individuals i work with have a passive or active upper limb and lower limb trainer in mm -hmm. their property so sometimes what we do is we're not we're not comparing the benefit of using that compared to water we're saying that using perhaps being in the pool that their edema reduces more quickly being in the water compared to using this piece of equipment but obviously they can't use the pool every day of the week yeah. so yeah. That, that this other piece of equipment is a is a collaboration of reducing their edema mm. um so we'll do that as an outcome tool we'll also um i'll, I'll do perceived level of exertion so borg um yeah. the clients that can do that um and the power of um using a sleep diary for parents or carers that are dealing with um an individual that really struggles with their sleep pattern using sleep yeah. diaries highlighting the fact that have, after an aquatic therapy session they generally sleep the whole night through yeah have you um have you used the tamper scale of kinesophobia I mean, I know it's a subject at times, in there. At times but that quite I lot, really quite like that one. Of it, but yeah, it can be really beneficial. Um, I haven't recently, but I, I have in the past. Um, mm. I don't think if, if, if there's any others that I particularly use. Um, uh, I think a general well-being one is very useful. You know how yeah. they felt before they got into the car. You know, <laughs> before it's getting the quality of life. I mean, there's there's quite yeah. a selection of quality of life questions. Yeah. So I think with that, it's a question of 
choosing the appropriate one for for the person's absolutely needs. yeah definitely and i just think it also highlights to them that is it worth the effort of an hour's drive some of my clients drive two hours for our sessions you know that's how committed yeah. they are to wow. their therapy some even travel three you know and it's just unbelievable that they're prepared to do that so when we actually do these outcome tools it then it's a help for them a motivation that actually yeah, yeah you know it is worth this journey they, they generally don't need that but it highlights to them that actually a whole day out is for a one hour session but that yeah. what they know that can be it can even if people live an hour away or 40 minutes away from the pool for them it's not just to get in the car it takes an hour to get ready it's half you know 15 20 minutes to be assisted into their vehicle they arrive at the pool they have to then be assisted out of their car go to reception have a drink you know then go into the changing yeah. room that can take 40 minutes sometimes to be assisted with changing um and then then you know we expect them to be really excited and full of energy to get into the water and work hard you know and then mm -hmm. it's tiring for them it and they tiring. have a session and the whole thing happens again so what, yeah. what's one hour session is often a four or five hour actually planning of yeah. that day which yeah, is a lot it is yeah. a lot it is a lot so what do you think has been the biggest challenge to you personally uh, in your career um what well, working as a therapist yeah yeah Oh, definitely not having enough pools, you know, that the challenge of having to find the right pool for my clients. Um, I finally found one um, that I'm in a lot, um, but it is difficult to find the right place, the right staff, the right atmosphere, mm -hmm. the right changing rooms. And for also the other family members to come to, because yeah. it's not just my client, you know, if they've got younger siblings, I want, you know, I'd, I'd never not have them in the pool with me and, and their sibling or, you know, if it's a family, if it's a mum or dad that's been affected by an injury, I, you know, the, the family are always welcome to come in the sessions if that's what the client wants. And yeah. um, so finding a pool that's big enough, that's well managed, that's clean, uh, that's really good thing. changing facilities and where it's a really nice place to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, I found that, right. that is a challenge <laughs> it is, it's really hard but the key is having staff that really understand complex needs um as well and it's difficult there's such a shortage in britain uh, yeah and i feel lucky that in the midlands actually we have got a couple of really good places but people you know they're expensive to hire so they people are. have to be in a financial position to do that you know yeah. I, I, you know, I would never make a profit on the pool hire. Uh, you know, I, I charge my clients what I'm charged for hiring the pool facility, um, and it's expensive. Nice. To yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we've covered plenty, but we do have one final question. <laughs> that is, if you want to be remembered for anything when you retire, what would it be? <laughs> well. It's a really difficult one, that question, Linda, because I would want people to remember that I love being in the water and I love treating them on land. And I, I want people to remember me for giving 100% to them. But equally, I think I will be remembered for my love of cream eggs. <laughs> At Easter time, I'm always given cream eggs <laughs> because I do love them. And I love a full egg float. <laughs> so your, so, uh, your memory will be... Uh... And that's your epitaph. Yeah, she loves it. Pre-med covered costume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be a hell of a sight. But um, but I'd actually, my, as you know, my long-term goal is to have my own pool and yes. to have a have a, a therapy centre where you can do land and water-based treatment. Um, yeah. And I think that that would be my legacy. Absolutely, and a very worthy legacy, I think, at that. Yeah, and and mm. being able to have for people to be able to access aquatic therapy in safe cost effective and well managed way yeah um, and I, th I, th I think one of the things is also to realize it's not just about the acrobics of jumping around on poolside there is such a diverse um, oh, amount of things that you can do and such a varied career that you could have by just you know specializing in working in water so i think yeah definitely excellent okay i love it Thank you very much for your time. No problem. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> and to see you. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Absolutely.